All right, guys. I know we've been talking about the 44 a little bit this last week um, and me revisiting some of the older models and also producing some new models. So I just wanted to go over the 44 IYF, um, you know, back in the past and how it was such a great plane. But we decided to go ahead and bring it back into the hardcore version of this aircraft. Um, basically, the true spar method that I've always used and uh, actually kind of developed was the I-beam spars that end up going over each other. So on, this, on the same part on the bottom of the wing, you have an I-beam spar in the exact same placement as you have on the top of the wing. But what I've done here is we've taken the aircraft and we've put it in a jig and we put it in my new CNC router and we've actually taken a 1 16th inch CNC router bit and we've routed out everywhere where all the bays and the lids and all of the cutouts for the servos and everything go. So when it comes out of the router, it ends up looking a lot like this. Basically, this is one right out of the router. Um, you know, there's a couple keepers in here where, you know, you end up just cutting and pushing it the rest of the way through. Um, but basically, you have all your slots <clears throat> and everything done. So on the top and on the bottom and everything shadowed. So just for a quick example, here's what, I, what I've done with the aircraft after it coming out of the router and looking like this. I've taken it and I basically cut the motor mount in and then cutting the motor mount in, basically what I did is I took, you know, first I took all the blocks and everything out and then I've taken the saw and I made a mark and then I just basically used, the, used this little coping saw to go ahead and cut the motor plate in into the back. And we have a brand new revised motor mount to keep the thrust point put right on the center of the cord line. So you can basically see that that plate, that plate has been slid right in the rear. And now your thrust point is directly on the point where it really needs to be to make the aircraft fly correct. So um, around the perimeters of the bays, you can see that I've cut a perimeter. And when I've cut a, the perimeter with the router bit, I didn't go as deep. So what's nice is after you pull these pieces out, you can take a, a snap razor like this, and then you can see all the little pieces right there. What I've done is before I added the wing halves together, I've taken these and I've literally shaved the area around the perimeter to make a shelf for the lid that goes on here. On the front of the bay, you can see it for the two millimeter shelf all the way around. And then you also have an area right here where you can either put a magnet, you can put a, um, you know, a screw down holder, um, or even you know Velcro if you want for the lid. Um, I ran the spars I-beam all the way up in front over the front part of the bay that usually gets a little thin so it doesn't distort. Um, and then I left an area to go ahead and drop a flight camera and a Mobius in here if you want to. I'm leaving the nose pointy. You can modify it however you want. I took these pieces out of, out of the aircraft and then I sliced them and then I made them about just about a quarter inch thick and then I just re-glued them right down inside there. Um, I might have some coroplast bottoms for these available too, um, and, you know, in case you don't want to use foam. So this aircraft, you can see it. I put those I put those pieces right directly back in the bottom. All this is just pieced together right now. I didn't I didn't glue anything together yet. But you can see how nice the router does. It puts a really nice slice. It saves you so much time and layout and build. You're basically getting almost um, a molded type aircraft now. Um, that's all been CNC routed and CNC hot wired. So this is the lowdown. I hope you guys like it. A lot of work. If you guys are tired of cheesy wood motor mounts, you having to hack and whack all the holes in your aircraft, you're having to design all the cutouts, having to lay everything out yourself with a ruler and a pin. What's nice is you basically get all this stuff done for you, and the only thing you have to do is the modifications that you see fit. Um, I'm also open for suggestions on um, any other stuff, but I don't think I'm going to be cutting a lot of other channels and any of these other things out. There's so many variables on FPV systems. I think I'll leave a lot of these areas just alone and then if you want before you before you put it all together and you build you can go ahead and channel your stuff out to the areas that you want to go but your main spar is a box bar so you got four micro rods and those four micro rods keep the torsional strength in there and and really make a nice double i-beam box bar in there that really will give it the strength especially with the spread that they have so you're going to get an aircraft that's super super light 
when you build it in the wing beds after you put these in it's super super true you can use um, put goop down in these slots before you drop these down in you can rough the spar up if you want and use a gorilla or not even rough it up and use gorilla glue and put a little bit of gorilla in there before you drop them in and then wet the slot with a popsicle stick or whatnot back and forth to stir it up or if you're in a real hurry put them in drop some thick ca on them let it soak in and then activate it and then you know when you're before you paint your plane and you want to sand it all down you can sand it all down smooth and spackle or whatever you want to do or do a pirate build and literally just paint it and laminate it after a light sanding and go for it it's all up to you